take you through page one. Page one, any comments? Page one. I'm still very, very concerned that we don't have a formalized uh, setup for the youth parliament. We did discuss it yesterday in the uh, Chief Whips uh, forum, but that's not a decision making forum. So I do just want to put it on record here um, and, and that you as a speaker are also uh, made aware that the youth parliament and the proceedings thereof are a week and a day away. And I do think that as a matter of urgency, we need to finalize um, what will be happening and, and the way we will be proceeding with that particular youth parliament. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. We will be on top of that after this meeting. Uh, honorable members, any other matter arising? Uh, honorable Speaker, on the same matter that is uh, raised by uh, 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 Honorable Mazzoni. Mm -hmm. I wanted to recommend uh, to you, uh, Honorable Speaker, that um, let's discuss the matter when we are discussing the draft program, because on the draft program, they, 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 the youth parliament is there for the 26th. I suggest that whatever we've discussed uh, and, 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 and our recommendations are, uh, we communicate that to you uh, during that particular time when we discuss the draft uh, program. You, you suggest that we deal with whatever it is, the recommendations you will be bringing us, the Chief Whips, today still when we discuss the program. Is that all? Yes. Is that in order? Okay. Yes, Madam um, Speaker. And that is seen? Yes, thank you very much. Good morning, Madam Speaker, and good morning, good colleagues. Uh, the issue of Section 25, if you can give us a report back, thank you. Okay, the issue of section 25, I thought that our decision was handed back by the deputy speaker when he chaired, is it last week? Uh, yes, yes, Madam Speaker, he yes. did say something about end of the year, we haven't formalized. Yes, he, he, he did say something because we looked at it, we went round and round and we yes. thought that maybe the best compromise is to look at the end of November towards the end of November so that we, we're we not saying immediately now in, in, in August or whatever, but we give ourselves up to November because December and January are dead months, so you can't count on those months. Um, we had consulted with the chairperson of the committee and uh, the House Chair Frolic on this matter, and they had assured us that they think that that matter can be concluded by end of November. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. So okay. we'll expect a motion in due course. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Honourable Members, is there any other matter arising? At least well, we've got the Sergeant Johannes back today. Um, no matter arising, I, I move off matters arising, then honorable members. Madam Speaker, Madam, Madam Speaker Mr. Frolic, would like to say something? Mr. Frolic? Yes. Mkhalifi. 
Okay. Dada Frolic followed by Mem Kalipi. Madam Speaker, do you hear me? Dada Frolic. Madam Speaker. Good morning, Speaker, and good morning, good morning colleagues. Dr. Frolic. Madam Speaker, my hand is up. I did recognize you after Dr. Frolic, Mem Kalipi. Those, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, under point eight on the minutes of last week, there was a matter that was reported by the Honorable Mente about a certain um, practice that apparently has developed in the Portfolio Committee on Health. I have subsequently received a full report on that matter. I will share it with the Honorable Mente uh, so that we can uh, put this matter to rest because the information at our disposal completely contradicts was reported in the meeting. Thank you, sir. Mayor Mkalipi? Mayor Mkalipi? Mayor Mkalipi, you are muted. Mayor Mkalipi? Honorable members, I will pass. I have called on the member three times. Her mic is muted. Uh, speaker, Mente. Yes. Mente. Yes. On the, issue, on the issue that you have promised to get back to us uh, regarding the debate. Speaker, on I the my line is quite bad, but I can hear you. Yes, I now have Mente on the floor. Mente, please proceed. Uh, I just want to find out if you have any feedback regarding the debate we requested from you uh, uh, pertaining the Black Lives Matter debate. And uh, there is another letter we sent to your office again uh, with respect to the debate requesting. A, I, yes, yes, I do have feedback. Remember when during the last programming you raised the matter of the Black Lives Matter, I did say that, yes, I have received that correspondence that I will be attending to it, but that I would also be um, getting general consensus because if we don't handle that debate well, we might actually be in disarray. I have not concluded on that. I have subsequently um, received um, a request for gender-based violence and we are looking at providing a date as soon as we possibly can for that debate. We have not thrown away, please don't misunderstand me, we have not thrown away, we have not rejected the debate on Black Lives Matter. We have just um, one small leg where I want to consult and then decide whether it is um, we can find a date or not find a date on the matter, but I will come back to you. The latest one, gender-based violence, we are all agreeing that as soon as we can find space, um, we must go for that. Yes, Ma'am Kali, are you now fine? Yes, on page two, Speaker, if you can get an update on N NYDA. NYDA? What about NYDA, Honorable Member? Madam Speaker. Speaker, I, the minutes reflect that uh, they are intending to finalize the report on the 28th of July, but there was a discussion in regards to vacancies. Yes, the vacancies, okay. and if you can get an update, if that report will also include the vacancies, because there was a debate here in this forum to say that the vacancies can also be done through this platform. So if you can get an update. Okay, Linda De Caso, Linda De Frolic, help me out on this. Madam Speaker, I wanted to suggest that when we get to the report from the committee section, that matter will then be dealt with. Okay. Um, is that satisfactory, Mem Kalipi? Mem Kalipi? Okay, oh, we pass? Yes, Mem. Okay, we pass. Um, can we proceed, members? to the next item, I think. Um, committee section, are you ready? Committee section, Good, good morning, Madam Speaker. 
Honorable mm. members and colleagues, we are ready, Madam Speaker. Please proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. With your permission, our presentation will start from slide number 17, where mm. there are updates. The slide number 17 is the Local Government Municipal Systems Amendment Bill before PC on Cocta. The committee is planning to have further deliberations on the 24th and the 25th of June. The next update is on slide number 30. On this slide, uh, Madam Speaker, it is the notice from the President on determination of remuneration of independent constitutional institutions. The committee is going to have the... It had the deliberations yesterday, but the aim is to finish the matter on the 19th of June. The Which next is tomorrow. Update, okay. That is tomorrow, Madam Speaker. Yes, thank you. Slide number 31, the issue of the firearms amnesty before PC on police. The committee has deliberated. What is left is to adopt the report. We are following the committee to get the date so that we can uh, reflect it. The next update is slide number 34. It is the ATO committee to appoint the Auditor General. What we have done so far was to send letters to political parties, giving the parties deadline of the 17th of June. That was yesterday. The next activity is to convene a meeting where the committee will elect the chairperson and also develop the program. So far, we have received, Madam Speaker, uh, names from three political parties, EFF, IFP, and AIC. The next update is on slide number 37. That is the matter of NYDA. The full program, Madam Speaker, is on this slide. We have reported last week the dates that are stipulated. I had a discussion with the team supporting the committee. The submission will also be made to Honorable House Chair for permission for the committee to meet during the recess period. Hence, the aim to finalize is the 28th of July. The next update is on slide number 39. That is the petition from residents of Alberton before PC on Cocta. I can report, Madam Speaker, that the matter was finalized last night. The next update is slide 40. It's also a petition before PC on Cocta from residents of Jenniston, Egruleni. The matter was also finalized last night. The next update is on slide 41. It is also a petition from Jimiston and Boxberg Guruleni residents before Cocta. The matter was finalized also last night. The next update is on slide 42. It is the petition from Lizitele Town Ward 23 in Zanin before PC on Cocta. The committee is planning deliberations on the 24th of June. The next uh, update is on slide 43. It is a petition that was received from Naisna. Uh, it Before Cocta, I can also report that the committee had the del uh, deliberations last night, but the, the matter is still to be finalized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This concludes our presentation. Thank you very much, Ndade. The meeting deliberations? Do I have Natasha 10? Ndade Mulda Memazoni. Ndade Mulda? Yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. No, just with regard to slide 34, I unfortunately do not have a record having received a letter with regard to the appointment or the nomination for, of members for the Auditor General. And I understand that the deadline was yesterday. I would request, is it possible that we could extend that to Monday and give parties just a chance to have a look again? If that's possible, please. 
Um, that day, Kaso, what happened? Huh? Can I be recognized? Same with me. I've not received Same with you. Okay, Mema Zoni and then Mema Jordina. Thank you very much, Speaker. Just to say that that letter was found by myself purely by accident. Uh, one of my staff came across that letter. So there obviously was a problem in the dispersion of that letter. I do, however, want to inform the committee section that yesterday afternoon at 5.06 p.m., once I had received that letter and I saw that the deadline was the 17th of June, I did immediately submit the two names of the Democratic Alliance. So I would ask the committee section to go and check the email that I sent yesterday from the House. But there definitely was a problem with, uh, with the way that letter was sent around because uh, it, it was by pure chance that that letter happened to, to come across my, my table. Um, so I'm not surprised to hear that other members didn't get that email. Thank you, Speaker. Member Jordina? Th th thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, same like uh, um, uh, Mr. Melda, I've not received any letter, and I support Mr. Melda that uh, let uh, it be extended until Monday because we have not received any letter. Thank you. I think we must uh, agree in that class so that there is a problem. Um, which means that the other parties were likely to come across the letter because everybody should have received that letter in the same way at the same day. Mm -hmm. So I want to apologize to the parties who have been given the runaround. We will correct that. And Dade Castle will go into the matter and find out what exactly happened. But in the meantime, shall we all uh, extend? And if those who have submitted want to relook, you have until... Uh, until end of business on Friday to resubmit. Thank you very much. Honourable um, Speaker. And that is thing? Yes, I had my hand up on that issue. Honourable uh, yes. Speaker, I had no problem whatsoever with the letter. I received it last week and I wrote to all the other parties within my fold uh, okay. for them to give us names. And uh, I will talk to Honourable Mulder a little later about what happened in this case, but the letter was there and the two names were submitted as members who are currently serving on the Standing Committee on the Auditor General. So my names are submitted. But I wanted to raise another matter, if I may. Yes, please proceed. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I don't know if it's related to bills, but we do know that the Constitutional Court did make a ruling on the Electoral Act and gave us 24 months. And I do know it will be referred to the committee. Perhaps our legal department can do a summary for us as uh, chief whips or programming, just for us to understand, uh, you know, the import of that ruling. Uh, perhaps by next week and table it for our information. Will that be possible? Thank you. That will be possible. Um, uh, um, that castle, that will be possible. It, it will be possible, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can we, Mefander Merve is a member of parliament. Sir Charmaine from Legal I Services. Guess. From Legal Services. Okay. Madam Speaker. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am Kalipi. Ma'am Kalipi. I'm very, very sorry, Speaker. My yes, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Speaker? Yeah, the network is giving me a problem. So at some point, I don't hear what is going on on the house. I just want to check on the presentation of Advocate Dow. There is a petition from Ward 52. If it has been processed from your office, please. You are taking us back to... Dow, do you know of that petition? Has it been processed? M Your Madam mic? Speaker, yes, Madam Speaker, if we can get full details so that we can follow it up and report back to the House Chairperson. Okay. Office, office. Um, the how we receive petitions, how we process them, and how we finalize them. I'm getting blue in the face because I think there is a problem there. The way we handle petitions. So that it's your responsibility to go and follow up. 
you may request for some help from May Ukalipi, but if she says there is a petition, I take her word as an honorable member that indeed there was a petition sent to Parliament and therefore we should have been on top of it. Uh, any other matter on, on this before we pass? On the bills? Thank you. We proceed to, that was committee section. We now go to Bill's office. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, the document containing bills before Parliament was circulated. And uh, before I hand over to Advocate Van der Merwe for an update on Concord deadlines, I can just point out that uh, on the NCOP order paper, there is the Cyber Crimes Bill, which um, was passed in the Select Committee subject to proposed amendments. So after next Wednesday, 24 June, that bill will come back to the National Assembly for concurrence. Thank you. Thank you. May van der Merwe? Your mic has been muted, ma'am. Apologies. Good morning, members. Um, on the matters um, from the Constitutional Court, I've also uh, circulated a report, and then we have a, a prepared a short presentation just on matters where there have been changes. So on the second slide um, that is now up um, on, on, on your screens, um, if we can just move to the second slide, um, please. The On the matters are, that require action, um, is, uh, we are happy to report that there are two matters that have been finalized, they have been assented to by the President. Uh, these were noted last week, but they weren't noted in connection with constitutional court orders. Um, and these are the Promotion of Access to Information Amendment Bill and the Independent Police Investigative Directorate Amendment Bill. Um, both of these bills were also done by committees. Then there is a new matter, and as uh, Mr. Singh um, referred to it, the, uh, regarding the Electoral Act, and um, Legal Services is in fact already, um, there's already been a, a memo um, just to brief um, the presiding officers on, on this judgment, but we are also working on an opinion that will deal with how this matter could be, um, can, can proceed and can be dealt with so that we make this deadline um, of 10 June 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you, members. Um, are we all agreed with uh, the presentation on bills, especially in the missing on, on, on the electoral bill? Speaker, it's Natasha. Member Zoni. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Speaker, if I can just uh, quickly ask uh, Mr. Bell on the uh, on the bills before Parliament, I am I am personally incredibly concerned about about an issue. Um, I have studied and restudied and gone back through my notes and and sat with my staff until late last night, going through each and every one of the bills that is currently before Parliament and currently uh, before the NCOP. And uh, I did this specifically because um, the president said something last night which, which concerned me tremendously in his address to the nation. He said that parliament needed to get a, a move on and hurry up with the bills that dealt with gender-based violence so that parliament mm. and the lawmakers were not holding up the process. Now, Speaker, I'm, I'm looking for correction because I don't see a single bill that's before parliament that Parliament is holding up in any way that deals with gender-based violence. And the only bill I could find, and that even, uh, pardon the pun, Mr. Bell, but that rang a bell with me, was the fact that in Parliament the other day, we debated and agreed to the uh, prescription of the Sexual Offences Act, which is uh, now being sent, it's an amendment which is being sent to the um, NCOP, and it's, and it's before the NCOP. But there isn't a single other bill before Parliament. So I don't understand why Parliament last night was, was almost accused of holding up a process. There's, there's nothing for us to hold up because there isn't a single bill before us. So unless I'm gravely mistaken, Chair, uh, Speaker, I, you know, 
Parliament sort of took the the brunt of of, of something that that is it's not our fault. There, there isn't a bill that Parliament is holding up, and even when it comes to to the liquor bill, uh, the president said that we needed to take serious action with regards to um, the responsible consumption of of alcohol substances. And the only bill I could find there, and I'm correct, is the liquor protection uh, amendment bill. Uh, liquor products, which was in fact returned by Parliament, uh, uh, by the President to Parliament with reservations. So, Speaker, I I'm deeply concerned. Is there a, a clog? Uh, is there a backlog that we don't know about? Is there something stopping bills coming to Parliament? Because certainly the President was very, very uh, clear on the fact that there were, there were bills before Parliament and that Parliament seemed to be holding up the process. But I cannot find a single bill that deals with gender-based violence that's before us, uh, that, that requires uh, parliamentary action. So could we have some clarity on that? Because I, I find this deeply, deeply concerning. In Tate Kaso, do you have any candle to light on this one? Your mic is muted. Madam Speaker, I don't, I don't. I did a, a bit of research also last night, and um, the information that I had was that some of these bills are possible still with cabinet, and um, and they could be bills related to Domestic Violence Act and the Criminal Procedure uh, Act. I I talked to legal services just to check my facts. And, and I would like Advocate Van der Merve to just uh, comment on that. Mayor Van der Merve. Thank you, Speaker. Yes, um, we are aware of a um, briefing that was given to the Portfolio Committee on Justice around the 18th of May. Um, and there the minister informed that committee that they are preparing three bills that will be proposing amendments to the Criminal Law, Sexual Offences and Related Matters Amendment Act, the Domestic Violence Act and the Criminal Procedure Act. So um, I agree um, with uh, Ms. Mazzoni that the, the only bill that I could find that deals with these kind of matters is the prescription um, bill. Um, and, and that bill is more about when you are allowed, how long you are allowed to, to, to lay a charge after the, the incident. And I don't think that is what the president was referring to. So um, according to our records, these bills are still with the department and will then go through the, the cabinet process. Um, no, thank you. thank you very much. It simply means, Ms. Mazzoni, that we must crack the whip. Um, if we are being beaten for the bills we have not yet received, We've got to follow the trail. We've got to go and beat up somebody who's holding the the bills so that uh, the air is cleared. Speaker, Speaker, I wonder if you could then do us a, a favour as, as Speaker of Parliament, because I, I personally felt um, uh, almost as Parliament that we'd let the public down last night. I wonder if you would be so kind as to write to the President and to inform the president that, in fact, parliament has not been derelict in its duty, mm. that parliament is waiting for cabinet to, to submit these bills to the House so that we can debate them. Because I have a fear that the president is under the impression that the ministers have submitted these bills to parliament and that parliament is holding them up. So, Madam Speaker, I felt almost that you and I got beaten up last night for something that's not our fault. Because let me tell you, as a, as a woman not only as a woman parliamentarian, as a woman South African, I most certainly would do everything in my power to make sure that a gender-based violence bill would be processed with the urgency that it requires. So I think it's very unfortunate that Parliament is being blamed for something that, that isn't Parliament's fault. So perhaps um, maybe you should just explain to the President that these bills, in fact, have not come to Parliament yet, and that when they do, you will most certainly be cracking the whip. Um, I, I thought I'd go a step further, do that, but follow up on the ministers who are supposed to have submitted to ask them the question, why? Excellent. Because they still are members of the House and we still can crack that whip. I'm so I think we will do just that. Uh, honorable Swart. members, any other matter on bills? Um, Swart, yeah. 
Dr. Swart? You know, just on the previous matter, uh, being a long-standing member of the Justice Committee, um, it is a concern, and there's always the possibility that if we don't get the bills quick enough from the executive, that the committee itself shades bills. So that is something to consider. To get a response from the executive to say they're in the pipeline, we need to bear in mind the president referred to his announcements sometime last year already about the possibility of these bills. So there is a degree of urgency, and so that is always a, a second option is to bring committee bills. Thank you very much. Yes, um, even though you are not very clear, um, I think I got what you are saying. Um, I think we should do that, members. I think we should also uh, perhaps begin to bear our claws a little bit nicely. Um, I don't like being blamed. I, I've gone through some time of being uh, disparaged three times in my life in this parliament. Reports I didn't know anything about, uh, whatever, whatever. And therefore, I take strong exception to be blamed for something I do not know because it has been done to me many times before. So we will definitely be following up. Dr. Mulder? Uh, Honourable Speaker, colleagues, I understand what we are talking about. I understand the seriousness of the issue. But constitutionally, I also feel very strongly about the separation of powers. And I think we should be very careful that we do not get in a position where we as the legislature try to prescribe to the executive. I, I just want to put that out there. Maybe we could just react by saying that we are ready to proceed whatever comes our way, but I'm, I'm concerned about the separation of powers. Thank you. I'm very, very, I'm always very clear about where the line is drawn, Dr. Mulder. In this instance, we've been dragged into the argument. So we need to clear our name in the public as parliament, but we also need to crack the whip on the people who have dragged our names there. We're not telling them how to write the, 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 the bills. We're simply saying, by now you should have, because this matter is. Because directly we represent the public too. So if there is any instrument that is supposed to lighten the lives of women and children out there, then we need to be forthright in that fight. But I take the point you are making. We should not prescribe to them how but we should remind them that we are getting a, a beating because the dereliction is on their part, not on ours. Um, May Mazzoni, on the last one on this. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Speaker, I understand the separation of powers very well, but the fact of the matter is this. The nation now thinks that Parliament has legislation before it, which it doesn't. And that in itself is, is misleading to the, the public. It's, it's not right. And when issues are not right, it doesn't matter uh, whether it comes from the executive or whether it comes from parliament. We have a duty to always tell the South African public the truth. So we, we have a duty to inform the public that these bills are in fact not before parliament and that the members of parliament have not been derelict in their duties. So Madam Speaker, I think you are completely right and completely in your place to say that this is a, a point where you've been beaten unfairly because you as speaker would have made sure that these bills would have been processed correctly. So I, I don't see this as, a, as an issue of, of having to separate the powers. I think this is a, just an issue of making sure that the public understands that, uh, that what was said last night is in fact incorrect and that parliament is not uh, holding up the process of, of, of uh, passing bills uh, dealing with gender-based violence. We are awaiting those bills. And I think that is the clear distinction to make. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Honorable members, shall we pass? Um, Speaker? Speaker? Ma'am Kalipi. Ma'am Kalipi. Thanks very much, Speaker. I was listening. Yes, Speaker, can you hear me? Yes, you are not very clear. Mem Kalipi. Yeah, it's a network, Speaker. Yeah, uh, say what you want to say, Mem. Okay, we pass. No, thanks very much, Speaker. I was also... Oh, God. 
can we proceed? Ma'am Kalipi, you will get a chance when um, we, we get towards the end and you can clear up a little bit. Can we proceed to item number seven, please? Mema Jackie, are you ready? Um, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I am ready. Um, we are now on week 18. Uh, Thursday, the 18th of June. Um, after programming, there will be caucus by political parties between 10 and 13 hours. At 14 hours, there will be plenary up to 17 hours. The main business of the day will be questions to the president. At 50, tomorrow, the 19th of June, we'll have committees. And next week, the uh, week 19, Monday, the 22nd of June, is Tuesday, the 23rd of June, between 10 and 12.45, is committees at 14 hours. Uh, on the 23rd, we'll have plenary up to 17 hours and the main business of the day is uh, questions for oral reply, uh, economic uh, cluster, cluster five. Wednesday the 24th of June, between 9 and 12.45, there'll be committees. At 10 o'clock, there'll be chief whips forum. At 15 hours, uh, we'll have plenary. Uh, the main business of the day will be introduction to special adjustment budget. Thursday, the 25th of June, 8.30, will be programming committee meeting between 10 and 13 hours. We'll have caucus at 14 hours. Uh, there'll be plenary up to 17 hours. And the main business of the day will be questions to the deputy president. Friday, the 26th of June, uh, will be youth parliament. And the constituency period will stretch from June 30th to July the 27th. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much, Honourable Members. The floor is open. Any takers? Yes, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker. Member Jordina. Member Jordina, that is seen. Member Jordina. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker on on Youth Parliament. We, we discussed the concept document of youth parliament. We discussed the program, but uh, we were not happy about the program because on the program, there were four ministers that were going to make a presentation. And then uh, in the same program, the, the, the so-called youth parliament was going to break into commissions. And our firm uh, decision was that uh, we cannot have a youth parliament that is going to be addressed and you don't give an opportunity to young people to be able to debate issues that are, are affecting them. The, the, the theme is very clear, youth power growing South Africa together in, in this period of COVID-19. We then sent a Mr. Trasso to engage the presiding officers that are, 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 are assigned to host the sectoral uh, 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 activities. I, I, I have uh, engaged with the presiding officers as well, and what I'm, I'm, I'm going to report now is based on the engagement after the Chief Whips Forum of yesterday. The engagement has been uh, that uh, um, as we move forward to the Youth um, uh, Parliament on the 26th, we are going to have, hold it on hybrids. In that hybrid, in the National Assembly Chamber, we'll have 44 physically uh, present or attending uh, members, which are young uh, 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 people, not necessarily young parliamentarians, because this is a youth parliament. It's not a young parliamentarian's uh, a parliament. So it must depend upon a party, a party, political party, who to send in that youth parliament. If I may make an example, ANC has alliance. If ANC decides to send, to bring SAS, COCO, SAS, Youth League, uh, whatever, but it must be within the allocated seats. 
we agreed with the the, 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 the theme of 44. That 44 represents the 44 years of commemoration of a, a June 16 uh, uh, uprising. Therefore, each party of the 14 political parties represented in the National Assembly or in Parliament, they must be they they, 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 they must be allocated seats, and those seats were done uh, allocated accordingly in, in yesterday. We agreed with the presiding officers that uh, will take out the presentations by 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 ministers, the four ministers that were identified to come and address. Because we're saying those ministers, they can be there as passive members to listen to the issues that are raised. Then at a particular time, not during the youth parliament, they must be able to give the progress report. That must form package of an a, 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 a annual plan so that we don't take a youth parliament as an event, but it must be a program that is based on clear plan of action. And therefore, we requested the presiding officers to rework the program. Secondly, what we raised very uh, strongly as chief of forum, we looked at presiding officers. We know and, 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 and respect the role of presiding officers, but we're saying let's take a tune from what we did during the Women's Parliament, wherein we had a presiding officer, but uh, we also had women who are parliamentarians who were co-chairing the sessions. So we proposed firmly <laughs> that uh, if, 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 if presiding officers are, are, are supposed to be on the program, to preside over the program, but they must co-host or co-chair with young parliamentarians in each and every session so as to reflect that this is youth parliament. Thirdly, uh, we requested the presiding officers to unpack the civil society uh, youth formations, where uh, what 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 criteria was used to 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 to, to, to uh, identify five of, of, of them. If if if, if Prophet A says I've identified this, what criteria was used out of how many? So that is what they are they are tightening up uh, in terms of unpacking that. But uh, on what was our concern? On the on on the structure of the program, we have attended to that uh, last night. Hence, my report. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Thank you very much, Ndatesim. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Uh, yeah, Honourable Speaker, uh, I agree with the broad uh, format and the principle that has been just indicated by uh, the Honourable Chief, because that's how we usually have these parliaments with the youth participating. And yesterday's program was a seminar, and we didn't want a seminar type of thing, but the parliament. Uh, but the other item that I just want to raise, uh, Madam Speaker, I know you'll get other matters, but I'll have to be excused at 20 past nine, is the constituency period. I think we, we, we decided yesterday that that period will be influenced by the tabling of the special adjustment bill and uh, the time frames that arise from there. We have to pass Dora within 30 days, et cetera, et cetera. Mr. Castro explained all those things to us. So that constituency period, which is listed there, will change. Thank you. Thank you very much. Memente, did I hear your voice? Yeah, yes, Speaker. You have yeah, the speaker. Problem. Yeah, my input is also in line with what Honorable Singh is saying in terms of the constituency period. So I remember that you have already given a, a go ahead that there's going to be a GBV debate, yet we only have one week to go. And if then the constituency period starts on the 30th, then this GBV is not going to be done now yet. It's taking place now and we need to react now. Just like the sentiments of, of uh, Honorable Mazone, that these things that were said by the president yesterday, that we are not acting on anything. All, all the resolutions of the previous debate have not uh, bared any fruit. And as so far as Parliament is concerned, we haven't done anything with respect to GBV and curbing it. So I will suggest that the constituency period do not start on the 30th of June. We might have the joint sitting uh, uh, that the week uh, that's starting on the 30th of June, or 
The only day we have is Friday tomorrow to have a joint sitting. If then it's not a joint sitting, it's an NA debate. We only have Wednesday, 24th June, the day when there's uh, the introduction on the adjustment of budget. So I do not know what are the options, but we must consider to have that GPV before we go to constituency period of this term. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there any other hand? Dr. Mulder? Yes, or a speaker. Let's hear Dr. Mulder first. Yes, speaker. Um, Dr. Um, Mulder, speaker, um, um, just with regard, with regard to the special uh, appropriation adjustment bill by the, uh, the Minister of Finance, would we have, please, as soon as possible, an indication either the Minister will be delivering that from the House itself or from a virtual platform, please? Thank you. We can find that out. Mayor Majodina? Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, let me align myself uh, with what um, Honourable Mende have said. The issue of gender-based violence, if, uh, if it was possible, we could not uh, postpone it anyway. I want to support fully that uh, instead of, 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 of us uh, taking a constituency from the 30th, that week of the 30th, let's have a special day that is meant to discuss gender-based violence and femicide. But uh, the approach on how we're going to debate it based on the previous um, a joint sitting must must be taken care of, but I fully support it that we cannot go to our constituency without Parliament having a voice and 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 condemn all these acts of gender-based violence and femicide. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. That is why I said we will have to find the space because I thought we did not want to break before we have dealt with GPV. Ma'am Kalipi. Mem Kalipi. Yeah, thanks, Speaker. I think I'm partly covered. Speaker? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Speaker? Yes. That was in the I'm Sanjay. No, 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 Speaker. I, I think that I'm, I'm, I'm partly covered. I'm thinking it. Who's oh, thinking it? <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Speaker. No, I wanted to emphasize on the point that was raised by Honorable Mente, and uh, I'm covered that the Speaker is going to look at the date and before the constituency break. Secondly, I just want to note the presentation or the feedback from the Chief Whip of the ANC because what she is reporting about in terms of the youth debate, uh, it's what we have also engaged with on the Chief's Forum yesterday. And Speaker, mm -hmm. I'm very happy to say that now is resolved because we raised some sharp concerns regarding those people who are old in Parliament who want to share uh, the debate of the youth. So now I'm very happy if I get a report from the Chief Whip of the ANC saying that now the youth will also uh, uh, owning their debate in terms of uh, the, the, the youth program, because it was very strange to us as chief whips to say that those ministers, they are going to dominate that program, and also the program will be chaired by the deputy speaker, will be chaired by the NSOP <laughs> deputy chairperson. So it means that those youth who have been going to be participating in that program was going to be just a talk show. So now I'm very delightful because she's giving us a report that resonates with our debate that took place yesterday in the Chief's Forum. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. As a youth uh, of 1976, I'm tempted to say that you have just been very ageist, but I get your point. I think we should all try always to find the middle point where we can all meet each other halfway members. It doesn't help sometimes to fight over some things when we should be driving a point. And indeed, we we need to be... We, we can't also throw out the old people out altogether. Uh, yesterday, I listened to the youth debate. There were a lot of in, inaccuracies in what the young members who were debating were saying. Um, and, and, and therefore, sometimes the old old dogs can, can still bring up the new little dogs into the <laughs> tricky part of the life. So don't throw us all out. I'm just saying, I know, go, 
I can understand Lichiso Amudimu trying to keep up with an 18-year-old. The Comrade Pemi will remember Majiba in the conference in Mafikeng when he was required to stand. He said, you know, I am 80. What do I still remember about being 18? And I'm always trying to remember that when sometimes get, things get tricky, that sometimes there are things that we, we can still do and some things we can advise on, and some things we must accept that in our age, uh, some of these things look very strange and, and we adjust to our children and they adjust to us. So that is life. So we have had you, Chief Whips Forum, We've gotten your recommendations. We will have a discussion with both Ndadevi Chesais on the platform and May Lucas and see how we meet each other up. Indeed, um, for me, the ideal situation of parliaments is that, sectoral parliament, is that you actually even find the presiding people amongst themselves, the people because it is them holding a parliament, it is them looking at the problems, it is them saying, because we are in this shoe, this is how it pinches and this is how we think you must think to resolve this pinching shoe. So, so, so it's not our usual day. It is us being lectured, it is us being led. So I've heard all what you are saying, uh, speaking for the oldies. Honorable Thank members, uh, members only. Madam Speaker, I, I would like to say something, if I may. Uh, and I was born in the year 1979, and I, for one, would very much like to hear directly from the mouth of those who were um, alive and fighting the liberation in 1976, because I believe that we have a lot to, of, of knowledge to impart, and there are a lot of lessons that we still have to learn. So I want to say, as someone who is still viewed as a, a young member of parliament, even though I'm 41 and I don't think I qualify as youth anymore, I would like to say that I agree with you. I do think that the original class of 1976 has a lot to offer and a lot to teach the class of 2020. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. Um, um, are we agreed that we will take the recommendations on how we will structure Youth Day. We, you are also suggesting to us that you have even spoken about the representation within the sitting in the house. We are, you are also saying it's a hybrid sitting. And we are also saying we're not closing out the executive. They must be there. They must take note. They must respond. But you are saying they don't have to respond at exactly the same youth parliament. They can respond um, fully, having considered whatever the youth has said later on. Um, I have heard members saying we have not been too good. Uh, we had the women's, the GBV, a joint sitting. We have also had uh, participated, some of us, in outside activities related to women and violence. We have not actually um, gone back to those sittings and to the things we've said anywhere else to say this is the consent and this is what we think government should be doing. And that is why it is important for me to follow up on to what the president said yesterday and to follow up on the Minister of Women and to follow up with the Minister of Justice to just see where these matters are so that we can, because we have a responsibility to 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 guide sometimes and we must be able to do what the constitution says the public education ensure better public participation in issues of governance so honorable members is there any other matter on item number seven that we still want to deliberate on uh, uh, speaker speaker can i come in Kuernof. Uh, speaker speaker in that order, please. Uh, Julius. Thank you, sir, uh, very much. Uh, on your last remark you just made in the follow-up, I strongly support that. I just went back, I didn't come in earlier, to the speech made by the president last night. And mm -hmm. the president never uh, referred to bills in parliament. Uh, what he referred to is legislative amendments have been prepared around. 
and he mentioned certain examples. And then he urged the law makers to process, process them without delay. So those, he didn't refer to bills into par, in Parliament. He referred to legislative amendments in the process of on the way to Parliament. So what I suggest, we follow your, your instruction and, and your decision that we took in this meeting, but that you just read finally the, uh, the, the exact statement uh, what the president made last night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, I was hoping that you would be more robust in defending us. Uh, <laughs> well, the only thing I want to say is that um, um, uh, all of us in the programming committee here, and in fact in Parliament, must read the national strategy uh, that expresses the views of all concerned about gender-based violence. It defines what ageism is, which you refer to. It also defines gender. Um, but there's also a historical precedent in the management of these affairs. Uh, there is interesting uh, evidence of working together with young people over these matters. And when we do so, um, it is important that we be cognizant that uh, uh, what we are doing is an ongoing program and we should not ignore things that we may not have directly personally been involved in because the, the men's forum was hosted in parliament, uh, working with social development, the Department of Social Development. And that work is critical, Madam Speaker. We have followed it in the districts. So I'm suggesting that when we speak about uh, uh, some of the resolutions that are contained in the uh, national strategy, even before the strategy was adopted. There was already work underway by Parliament uh, in collaboration with departments on this matter. So, uh, and, and we've sought to communicate that across so that we don't, we must sing from the same song sheet, represents the facts of the work that is being done uh, in Parliament uh, so that we, uh, people participated in those things. So they are going to wonder what we mean when we say nothing has been done about that matter. There's factual evidence about it, and so we must communicate better. I accept that we must take responsibility for that, that we must communicate better, uh, so that what happens in Parliament is understood and is followed through by, by all of us in the process. I just wanted to make that comment, Madam Speaker. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Dr. Papo, you are the last. Dr. Papo. Yes. Madam um, Speaker, I had my hand up. I didn't see the hand in Dr. Julius. I'll give you after Dr. Papo. You will be absolutely the last person. It is now exactly one hour since we started this meeting. Dr. Papo. I was saying that yesterday I was a bit uh, surprised at the, at the conduct of some of the members. Some of them is like Member Mukalipi and... Uh, and 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 uh, the the other the other members who basically undermined uh, the deputy speaker and uh, they undermined virtual rules which said that you don't have to have anything except parliament or a blank wall if you cannot your 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 device is not uh, suitable to be to be uh, connected uh, i mean uh, uh, loaded with the parliamentary building and then it was a demonstration and uh, basically a spectacle which uh, is repeating itself. And I think it's important that in this body, this issue is sorted out because we cannot be arguing in public over, over matters which were agreed. Some people in the House, uh, yourself, uh, the Deputy Speaker, were actually practically there when 76 happened. And now we, we've been lectured about people who know nothing about it. Uh, that day, I just found that it was just uh, it was just so bad that uh, you could argue about a, a, a photo of 1976 as if uh, people do not care about uh, 1976. Our movement welcomed majority of young people who left the country to, to become soldiers like yourself. But yesterday, the whole story which developed there was as if there are more there are other people who care about 1976 than the rest of us who were inspired by 1976, our generation. So 
I was I found the whole spectacle yesterday, and this continuing undermining of presiding officers, uh, not uh, in line with what we are discussing and the spirit we always have here. No, honorable members, I will summarize and respond to this at the end. Daddy Julius, you're on the floor. Daddy Thank Julius. You, Madam Speaker. I, I just thought I needed to Speaker, add definitely that. Any... Because my name is... Daddy Julius is on the floor. Uh, I just thought that any uh, debate on gender-based violence this time around should include a more deliberate in put from men, because men are the perpetrators, and I want to extend the, the thought of the president that, that men should take uh, uh, action for uh, or responsibility for this, and we need to include more men. So that should also be borne in mind when we, when we program the, the debate on gender-based violence, that the program or the theme for the day should be deliberate. Uh, uh, directed to the input of men and the responsibility that men will take in terms of GDV violence in our country. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, especially because we even have mapped the, the ages of male perpetrators of GBV. Thank you very much. Honorable members, I know that um, is it, Mem Kalipi, you want to make a point of order? I don't think we should, honorable members. I think we should, we should round off this meeting agreeing that, first of all, during the lockdown, using Rule 6, I did coin the, the rules for vegetable uh, uh, sittings. There was a process. We took them through that process through rules. We took them into the house, and therefore, the rules are there. We cannot continue to say there are no rules that that uh, uh, govern the sittings in virtual sittings. We can't do that. So on that score, I think it is out of order. Secondly, I think yesterday was regrettable, members. You know, when you are in the house. No. It is different than when you are on the platform. When you are in the house, you've got the right to do that. But when you use your right to howl on the platform, it takes a different tune. So sometimes I think even as we, 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 we preside, we take into consideration those things. But members should never be very personal about other members. And I think... Sometimes when you preside and you have to deal with members taking each other on like that, you really, really feel ashamed on behalf of all the members, especially the ones who are trying to keep within the rules. So I would just say, let us take this as a chastisement to all of us. Let us observe the rules. You can have your debates. You can be robust. You don't have to be rude. And, 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 and I think that we need to do that because in times of crisis, it doesn't matter who you are, people look for leadership and that leadership must be united and that leadership cannot be uh, going in all directions. So, so we need to begin to understand that on certain matters we will not play politics and when times are nice, we can go back to playing politics. But for now, I would just say I want a house that begins to understand that time for politics will come. But for now, we need to beat COVID. We need to beat unemployment, which is increasing. We need to beat um, a, an economy that we must all be putting ideas to. It's no longer just one party worried about the economy. All of us must be worried. So, honorable members, if you don't mind, I don't want this matter to continue to disunite us. And I think it is 9.30. 9.36 to be precise, and I'm closing this meeting. But Speaker, Papa, that's the Papa, that's the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Speaker.
Baba, I was named here yeah, and you didn't protect me when I was attacked by Papa. When today? Yeah, Papa just insulted us. We can't be insulted by Papa because he's also irritated by the same picture which greets him every day when he enters parliament. When he enters the chamber, that same picture is there, it's part of parliament. What is it that is not parliamentary about that picture, which is in parliament, that greets us every day there? And now he Honorable comes members. and can stand in. Honorable no, members, Papa must not... not... No, I've heard you, ma'am, that there is a picture. It is a genuine picture of 1976. Parliament has also taken a, a, a way of saying, let us use a particular background or use a, a blank wall. I'm taking all this. But the reason I do not want an outright battle on this platform right now is exactly what you are beginning to do. Papa says this, therefore we are countering. Lengiwe says this, therefore we are countering. You are all called to order members and this meeting is closed. Thank you, speaker. Speaker. But you are so unfaithful. Papa, come and attack me, and then you just 